for the last three days, we've been on a family trip. I have been pretty much offline completely. No vlogging, no Facebook, no Twitter, just basically completely offline. Today, we're going to a place called Aquakef, which is basically an amusement park on the Kinneret, which is awesome. And Ami, the owner, has invited us as his guests. I will be interviewing him. I will be droning. It will be fun. Today is going to be a little bit different. Here we go. I said this, this vlog's gonna be a little bit different. This is a little bit, a lot different. I'm sitting with a guy named Ami Ochayun, right? Correct. Right. Who introduced us originally, remember? He was David um, Yahid. Yes. So David Yahid, who's been on the vlog before, you guys have met him several times, introduced me to Ami a couple of years ago. We've been in touch by email, speaking a couple of times. Anyway, bottom line is, this guy runs a place that is like nothing I've ever seen. I, is there another place like this place in the world? I've never seen it before. There are similar inflatable parks. This has been uh, adjusted to the Israeli world. Okay, so we are about to go into a place called Aqua Kef. Kef in Hebrew means fun. And it's basically, like I said before, an amusement park on the Kinneret, Israel's, I guess, largest. Garrett's a lake, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's start from the beginning. What's your story? What's your name? Where are you from? What, give me your background. Yeah, my name is Ami. All right. I was born in the States. I grew up in France. Uh, oh. Met my wife in Canada, in Camp Moshava. Oh, cool. Um, been living in Israel for the past 25 years. Nice. I live in Ranana. What year did um, you move to Israel? 92. Oh, and yeah. 90, wait, maybe I also moved here in 92. Yeah, I think I also moved here in 92. Oh, okay. cool, interesting. I came here by myself, my family came after, mm -hmm. studied here, and- um, What did you study? I studied in Bar-Ilan. What? Uh, economics. Political science in Bar-Ilan. Okay, those years also, 93, 96. I did Hesder, I don't know. Okay. I'd have to ask the wife to tell me what years it was, because I don't know. I don't know. Remembers these things. We might have overlapped. But yeah. anyway, okay. been doing finance for many years till I came to an opportunity in Spain to do real estate in the tourism world. Cool. Um, always wanted to do something that is a little bit different. Not always found myself in finance the way I wanted yeah, to. You don't seem like to. a finance guy. No. Okay. And uh, I came up to that opportunity to open a park. Uh, I have family in Spain that is running the Jewish community for the past six years in the south of Spain, Marbella. We were the first Jews to come back from Morocco to Spain uh, six years ago and they established a the Jewish community. So they were established in Spain and they told me about like that innovative water park. Um, so I thought, uh, they always told me, you know, you should be doing this in Israel. I was doing that real estate project in Spain. They said, why are you coming here? You should be doing that there. And that's the way everything started. Um, I just want to say one thing. Today is the big test for the quality of my camera. I want to know if when I watch this footage over, if I could see the drips, the, the sweat dripping down my, my neck because it is so freaking hot today and the power just went down in a whole beach here. So there's no air conditioning. So I'm dripping sweat here. Me too. Without a hat. It's like, what is happening? Okay, anyway, more importantly, so Aquacast. So Aquacast started as, a, as an idea. Mm -hmm. uh, it was very hard to get the permits because nobody, all the town halls were excited when I presented the project, but they didn't know how to handle it because it was never done before. And you need a lot of conditions to make it happen. Like it's not just a water park, it's just, it's a park that needs a lot of permits, but also a lot of conditions uh, physically in order to make it happen. So we checked the entire country, which is not so big, but it came out to be that Israel, we could only do it in a lot and we could only do it in that part of the Kinneret, not even on the other side, just that part. Okay. So um, we got permits, we got started. Just, just uh, to give you some context, sorry to interrupt you, the Kinneret, just so, you, just so you understand. I was in Zurich last week. I believe the largest lake in Switzerland is 37 times larger than the Kinneret. The Kinneret in global scale is tiny. Tiny. And this is a small little corner of the Kinneret, and this place is absolutely magical. And it's again, it's just a small little, you'll see it in a minute. I'm gonna drone over it, I'm gonna fly over, I'm gonna show it to you, I'm gonna do a little cool time lapse. It's a super cool place, but just in terms of scale, I mean, it's it's pretty small, relatively speaking, and it's awesome. Go on, yes. We got started um, about two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, we started with one park. 
Uh, our capacity was then 400 people at the time. Okay. Um, we always wanted to make something big. Uh, we had a vision to, you know, be able to host large groups. But it took a while to get the permits and to get um, the the branding going. And at the end of the day, we started the first year with one park of 100 people. Right. Uh, last year, we added another park of 200 people, so our capacity was 300. Mm -hmm. And this year, we added another park, so our capacity in the water is to 400. So we have different levels of parks. We have for beginners, uh, little kids from three to six. We have intermediate, and we have also what yeah, we call the extreme, and uh, okay. uh, for the ones we really want to um, cool. action. All right, so first of all, website, if somebody wants to learn more. Aquakef, A-Q-U-A-K-E-F. .co.il. That's our website. A Q U A K E F. .co.il. It's in Hebrew. Yeah, or dot .com. Yeah. Oh, there is a dot .com. There is a dot .com. And it's in English. It's in English. Oh, also. beautiful. Okay. And generally speaking, how much in advance? Let's call. It, let's say for the summer when it's relatively full. How much in advance do people have to book, or they can just come and show up? So you have to be very careful because our we love everyone, of course. We are very loved by the religious world, which means that the, the fact that we're closed on Shabbat and that. Uh, we offer separate hours. There's a big demand for separate hours. So it's not we, always separate right now. It's that's, that's right. So from 9.30 till 3.30, in general, we open to public. Okay. And then from 4 o'clock, because you need a little bit of time to uh, change the world. Uh, okay. it's, a, it's a clash of worlds. Um, so from 4 o'clock and on, uh, we're open for separate. So we have sometimes men hours, sometimes women hours, and sometimes we split the park in two. And we have one man, uh, one side men, the other side women. I'm gonna say something, and I'm not gonna. We're not gonna get political today, but I'm just gonna say one thing. When it comes to swimming, when it comes to this type of swimming, because this is, uh, you'll see soon, it's you know, it requires a lot of effort and climbing and all kind. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say not only religious people want separate hours. Is that true? Do you find do you find that secular people also sometimes show up for for separate hours, or it's only religious? No, only religious. Only religious. The the secular people uh, in general come for separate hours because they don't know that we close at 3:30. Okay. That's uh, that's okay. the only reason. Interesting. All right, very cool. In any case, um, generally speaking, though, you have to book in advance. Is it a long time in advance? Is it always full? What's you can book through the website. You can also come on site. There's uh, enough capacity for everyone. It's a 45 minute activity. Oh, cool! You can do 45 minutes. You can do an hour and a half. Usually, people that do 45 minutes say that it's not enough. People that do an hour and a half it's hard. say that it's too much. We're in uh, Israel, so it will be very hard to make everybody happy. That's right. But we're that's trying right. very hard. Uh, that's, uh, right. that's let me let me now show you what I'm about to do, and I'm going to show you a little glimpse of what's going on out there in the park, and then we're going to go fly over. Sound good? Thank, thank you. you. By the way, Ami, thank you so much for having us. Today. Really appreciate it, man. Really, really. I hope I can hopefully we'll be able to justify getting some business here. But I really appreciate it. This is our second time here, and kids love it. Everyone loves it. It's fun for fun for the whole family. I'm a big fan. Thank you very much. So just thank you know, full disclosure, because by the way, on the internet, I could tell you something about the internet. There are haters on the internet. And if you get something, you don't disclose it. Not only on the internet, there are haters. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so full disclosure, Ami, you know, we're his guest today. So just kind of full disclosure, irrelevant. I wasn't as he didn't pay for me last time, and I loved it last time. So my love of this place is, you know, independent of the fact that he's hosting us today. But again, thank you for that. And let's do some droning, but check this place out. So this is our final destination on a three-day full family trip. We do this once a year. We come up north. We were staying by the Kinneret, and we are finishing up here in Aquakef. Just did some cool droning, as you saw. Heading back to Beit Shemesh shortly, and then tomorrow, a regular day, a jam-packed one, but very, very exciting meetings tomorrow. See you then.